In this video, I'm gonna chat about tolerance stack up. So I'll get questions about what a tolerance should be and how you choose tolerances. It depends on the dimensioning scheme and it depends on the requirements you're looking for. So let me go through an example here. We've got an assembly. We've got a U-shaped part with a slot right here and we wanna fit three blocks in there. Now, we've gotta have clearance on the blocks or else they won't all fit. If the blocks are too big, they won't fit in this, uh, in this slot. Now, the way we figure out how much clearance it is, is we're gonna move all the blocks over for our diagram and we're gonna assess this gap. So we're gonna mathematically figure out if that gap is positive or negative. If it's positive, we have clearance. If it's negative, we have interference. So the requirement we've set out is that all three blocks fit, so we have to have clearance. If we have interference, then we haven't met a requirement. So the dimensions on this drawing are all left and right. I omitted the up and down dimensions. They're all plus or minus dimensions. So the outer boundary is the largest dimension, the inner boundary is the smallest dimension. We don't have to calculate anything with GD&T for this example. So the way we're gonna do this we're gonna pick a, a side of the gap to start from, and then we're gonna follow each dimension. So I'm gonna call this dimension one, two, three, four. Now, because the blocks are gonna to fit together at assembly, we assume they're touching. So this is one inch plus or minus 20 thousandths, this one inch plus or minus 20, one inch plus or minus 20, one, two, three, the last block is going to be touching this side of the U shape. So we're going to take into account this dimension. And now we get to the end of the part. So we can go back to where we started. So this is four. This is five. That brings us to this side of the part. Now we're going to go back here and we've ended up on the other side of the gap. Now, we're gonna take into account all of these dimensions because they all rely on each other uh, as far as that gap, right? You have to take into account the overall dimension because there's no way to get from this side of the gap to this side of the gap without following all of the dimensions. So the way we figured out mathematically, we're gonna take this first dimension, we're gonna call it negative. So anything going left of the gap is negative. Anything going right is going to be positive. So, so we've got all our dimensions right here and all of our tolerances. So we're going to add them up. The dimensions are going to give us zero, right? So we got all these negative numbers, four. And so it's basically negative four, one, two, three, four, negative five, uh, plus positive five is going to be zero. Now the trick is, the tolerances always add. So 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, 120. So plus or minus 120 thousandths. That could give us a gap of 120 thousandths or an interference of 120 thousandths. So right now this part wouldn't work. Now, what you might think first is to go ahead and just tighten up all the tolerances, right? That's usually what people go for. So let me show you what would happen if we just tightened up all of the tolerances. All right, so we make all the tolerances plus or minus one thousandths. So that's gonna give us plus or minus six thousandths because we have to take them all into account. So our maximum gap could be six thousandths or minimum gap could still be interference, so negative six thousandths. So this part would be difficult to make or more expensive to make, and it still might not meet the requirements if all the blocks come in near their tolerance limits. So the first thing we'll do here is look at the actual tolerancing scheme. So what we could do is instead of applying this dimension overall, Let's apply the dimension directly to that slot, okay? So now when we do our stack up, we're gonna do one, two, three, and now this is four. So we can ignore 
this dimension and this dimension. We can get from one side of the gap to the other side of the gap with just four dimensions. So let's see what that does for us. It's still not going to meet the requirements. We could still have 80 thousandths of interference, but without changing any of the tolerances, we've removed 40 thousandths of variation, right? So it used to be 120 thousandths, and now it's 80 thousandths, just by changing how the tolerance or the, how the dimensions are applied, right? So the way to actually get these blocks to fit would be to change the nominal dimensions. So we could pick either make the block smaller or make that groove larger. So what I'm gonna do is make the groove larger by 90, uh, by 90 thousandths. All right, so what that's gonna do for us, we go through and add these all up. We've got 90 thousandths, so our max, our max is 170 thousandths, our minimum is 10 thousandths is positive 10 thousandths. So that means that all three blocks will always fit even at worst case conditions. So if the blocks come in all big and the groove comes in small, you'll always have 10 thousandths of clearance in this assembly, okay? So that's all I wanna go through today. It's important to know how to stack up your dimensions and tolerances and figure out what this variation is so you can go through and usually you do it with an Excel calculator and figure out how to optimize each dimension and tolerance to achieve what you want, okay? So I'm gonna make more videos about this soon. I'll include some more GD&T characteristics and show you how to do the inner and outer boundary calculations to find your vectors. So that's it. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe and check out the channel for more content coming soon.